Hey, what's up? I'm Allie and welcome back to my channel. I'm kind of bummed because there was a lot of books that I was looking forward to in the second half of the year and a lot of them got pushed to 2023, unfortunately. So I had to go through and find a new list. A new, put, just find some more releases that are coming out. I also tend to look at new releases that are coming out for the year at the beginning of the year and a lot of times the ones later in the year aren't out yet or they haven't announced them or something along the lines of that and I sometimes forget to do like a mid-year check-in, see what's coming out for the rest of the year. So I finally got to sit down and do that and I thought I would tell you 10 books that I am looking forward to for the rest of the year. Now I will say I'm going through a bit of a crisis with my reading taste. So these are things that I feel like I wouldn't have normally talked about in the past, but there are still things that I'm looking forward to. A lot of it is horror, so that's just where, where I'm at in life, apparently. First, we have Daphne. This comes out September 20th, and this is basically a Jason Freddy kind of retelling in that a woman is stalking a girl's high school basketball team, and it is a slasher. And I just think it sounds like a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed the slasher books that I've read that kind of read like movies. So I'm hoping that this will be along the lines of that, and it will be really enjoyable. Also on September 20th, we have No Gods for Drowning, and this is basically the god have fled and all the monsters that they kept at bay are now loose in the world. While all this is happening, there's also a serial killer on the loose who's killing these victims and just leaving them all over the city. So we follow Lilac who wants to stop the destruction of her city by summoning her mother who is a blood god. Thing is, she has to kill some people in order to do such a thing. Follow Alex and Cecil who are investigators who are trying to find the serial killer without realizing it that it is their good friend, Lilac. Along the way, they realize that the gods didn't leave willingly and that there's more to this than they ever would have thought before. And still on September 20th, we have a ghost eater. September 20th is apparently a really good day for publishing. It is about a woman who's kind of been in a relationship that's it's on and off, it's on and off, it's on and off. And finally, she decides she needs to figure out her life. She needs to set some boundaries. She just needs to step away from her ex. That is until he turns up dead from an overdose and she feels like her world has been turned upside down. She learns that he discovered a drug that allows you to see ghosts. She doesn't believe in this and decides that she's going to test it out for herself and do a bit of a pill popping seance, so to say. But when she does, she starts to see ghosts of her own. As she is plagued by all these ghosts, she realizes this might actually be a little bit too real and she's not too sure if she can close the door that she has now opened to these to these things. On September 27th, Leech is coming out and I'm going to be honest, this synopsis sounds confusing as all hell. <laughs> but it still sounds intriguing and I really like the cover. The cover seems ooky, spooky, and I'm here for it. Basically, this seems a bit apocalyptic in a way in that there is like this institute that is allowing people to survive by basically taking women's bodies and like making them the best of the best over time to keep away some of the parasites that have been unleashed by their, their ancestors. That is until one of the parasites gets into this institute and starts spreading. Can't really tell if the institute is like a thing or a person, to be honest. But apparently it's going to battle against this virus to see who's going to win out and if humanity will get to continue to live on. Again, the synopsis seems a bit confusing, but it still seems creepy and I'm here for it. On October 4th, The Cursed Earth comes out. And what I was really drawn to this one for... There was two keywords here. One was Pennsylvania. I like creepy books that take place in Pennsylvania. I just, for some reason, I just really like that. This does take place right outside of Pittsburgh, I believe, but it involves, like, gang members, bands, and celebrities, and, like, just a weird mixture of people who basically come to this festival. Um, but the thing that really sold this for me is that it's a fungus festival. Horror books with a fungus in it, with fungi, is top tier for me right now. Something about fungus in a horror setting is my new favorite thing. Like, I'm obsessed and I need more of it. And the moment I saw that this even had the word fungus in the synopsis, 
I was like, that one. It's that one for me. Thank you. So that's what has sold. That's what I, yep. That's what I've been sold on. October 11th also has some good releases coming out. We have When the Night Bell Rings. Now, this is in the future, and it's, it's these refugees are going across the wastelands in western U.S., and they come across an, an old mine. They go there to get out of the heat. They go there in search of shelter and as well as water. When they get down there, they end up finding a diary from a previous settler there. They find out that there's something dwelling in the mine. There are all kinds of like phantoms and monsters written within this diary and these women find themselves trapped now within the mine with the knowledge that these things are in there. I have been really loving books that take place in like dark secluded like cave-like structures. <laughs> I am worried for myself. Don't worry. I'm already worried. Um, but that is something that I've been enjoying as well lately. So I think that that will be also something that I'll be really creeped out by. Also, House of Hunger. Oh my god, this sounds so good. Give me all the vampire shit. I am here for it. Carry on. Marion, I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but she decides that she is going to sign up to be a blood maid, and she knows that people in the north are very prosperous and rich, and basically she decides to become the blood maid to this really, like, fancy, fancy household, you know? Gets swept into this world of debauchery, and she's all about it. It's a vet who is the one who presides over this household and who she is the, the blood maid to. She is very interesting. She's very magnetic. She's, everyone wants to be her, but also hate her and like all the good things. And she has a very special interest in Marion. However, weird things start happening. Some of the other blood maids begin to go missing and she starts realizing that she might be walking a tight line between being alive and being dead. So I think this sounds so good. I think it sounds amazing. I think that it sounds, it's got, a, it's vampires. It's got sex appeal. Vampires need sex appeal. It's just built into it. I'm telling you, I've read the vampire books. If it doesn't have sex appeal, it's not doing it right. We need it. And it sounds like it has just enough of that. Just enough of that. They need to be fancy. I need all the good shit to happen. I got high hopes. On November 8th, we have Africa Risen, and I love short story collections, and I think this one sounds amazing. Came across it. It's got a stunning cover. This is a, an anthology of stories that is about fantasy and sci-fi in Africa, and I'm really excited about it. You got... I love a good short story collection. I've been looking for a new one. And actually, on that day, there is another short story collection coming out, Into the Forest, and that is Tales of Baba Yaga. And I'm really excited about that one as well, especially because Christina Henry does an introduction for it. And I fucking love Christina Henry. So I'm excited. We're going to get two really great short story collections. I can feel it. I need a really good one. I feel like I've been lacking in life. And on November 15th, we have a reader, I Murdered Him which the title alone was enough to intrigue me, Del, and she has kind of lived her life in the shadows. She's lived the, the life of her mother's shadows and also her father's haunted manor, and she ends up getting sent to boarding school, and she's really excited because she's like, finally, I will get to live a life, and she starts to notice that the men that try to charm her friends they're not innocent, and they have some really dark intentions, and she doesn't like that. She turns to a roguish young con woman, and they pair up, and they decide that they are going to deal out their own form of justice. I just think that sounds so hardcore, and I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. I'm excited. These are 10 of the releases that are coming out within the next few months that I'm just really excited about. I'm hoping to get to all of them. I don't even think I've read most of the ones that I said I was excited for for the first half of the year, but here we are. Hopefully you have found something new, some new title or something to look forward to. Let me know down below what books you are interested in for the fall. I hope that you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to see future videos from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!